You are highly welcome to yet another session in which we look at media and communications policy. Straight away, I'll link you to chapter one, where our focus is on media and democracy. If we are to define democracy, we would easily say democracy is a system of government in which all people of a country can vote to elect the representatives. Well, if we look back, media came into existence in the 1780s and since then it has played a very important role in shaping the minds of the public or society, including times of election. Now, uh, we shall go through the role of media in promoting democracy in society. Number one, media plays a crucial role in shaping a healthy democracy. It's the backbone of democracy. Media makes us aware of the various social, political, economical activities happening around the world. It is a mirror which shows us or strives to show us the bare truth and harsh realities of life. Number two, media has undoubtedly evolved to become more active over the years. It is through the media that politicians are reminded about their unfulfilled promises at the times of elections. The ex excessive coverage by TV, news channels during the election help people, especially the illiterate, in electing the right person to power. This reminder compels politicians to abide by their uh, promises in order to remain in power. In other words, it provokes accountability in them. Television and radio have made significant achievement in educating rural illiterate masses and making them aware of all the events that are taking place in their own languages. Coverage of exploitative malpractices of village heads and money lenders has helped bring stringent action upon them by attracting the government's attention. The media also exposes the loopholes in the democratic system, which ultimately helps the government to fill the vacuum of, the loop of these loopholes and to make the system more accountable, responsive, and citizen-friendly. A democracy without media is like a vehicle without wheels. In the age of information technology, we are often bombarded with information. We get the pulse of the world's event with just a click of the mouse. The flow of information has increased manfolds. The perfect blend of technology and human resources has not left a single stone unturned in unearthing the rampant corruption in politics and society thanks to technology that has brought a kind of revolution in journalism. No one is perfect in this world, and neither the media. I am not degrading the media, but I would say that there is still a lot of scope for improvement by which the media can raise up to the aspirations of the people for whom it is meant. I cannot think of a democracy without an active and neutral media. Media is like a watchdog in a democracy that keeps the government active. From being just an informer to it has become an integral part of our daily lives with the passage of time, it has become more mature and more responsible entity. The present media revolution has helped the people in making fundamental decisions and uh, this has led to the beginning of a new era in the democracy. Socialization, which is a transmission of culture. Media are the reflectors of society. They socialize people, especially children and newcomers. Socialization is the process by which people are made to behave in a way that is acceptable in their culture or society. Through this process, we learn how to become a member of human society in a greater sense. 
when whenever a person need reads a paper or watches television or listens radio individuals know how people react to matters and what they and what type of norms and values they perceive on particular events issue or situations through this process of socialization, media helps to shape our behavior, conduct, attitudes, and beliefs. The process of socialization brings people closer and ties them into a single entity. Like media stations receive in phone phones and listeners send dedications to their fellows. Now, let us shift our uh, attention to the role of media in a democratic society. The role of a media in a democratic society. The media is considered as the fourth estate. The following are the functions of the media in a democratic society. One, inform the public on what is going on, inform democratic choices through the clarification of complex issues particularly in an age when information is the driving force of the economic advancement and international events impacting on people's daily lives as never before. Number two, they provoke public debate leading to greater public participation in important decision making. Number three, media covers abuses and puts pressure for immediate alert and, mobil and mobilizes the public opinion to humanitarian injustices. Think of an example when a story is publicized in regard to torture and humanitarian organizations are provoked to react immediately. Number three, it covers abuses and puts pressure for immediate alert and mobilize public opinion to humanitarian injustices. Number four, it allows political pluralism to express itself by advertising different views, ideological approaches to certain issues, among others. Number five, it keeps politicians attuned to public opinion while offering politicians a medium to explain policies, decisions to the public opinion, and building the necessary support. Number six, they are educational channels. Number seven, they create platforms for influence. They create sensitization, mobilization, persuasion, advertising, and marketing sources of government revenue, and at the end, we also look at them as sources of employment. Now, I'll shift this again to look at the responsibility of the media towards society. Impartial media is neither possible nor desirable. Most newspapers, radio stations, televisions, have political or ideological preferences, but it is essential to maintain distinction between facts and opinion, reporting and analysis to use their trained professional reporters with knowledge of subject and who check sources before reporting. Setting the political agenda here, it is concerned with explaining issues without trivializing or sensationalizing them. Number three, uh, we look at publishing corrections made during publication or during broadcasting. And number four, we look at preserving state secrets. In other words, not misusing information likely to be harmful to national security or endangering the lives of individuals. And number five, avoiding invasion of privacy and human dignity in society. Now, let's turn to the responsibility of society to the media. One, create conditions for a pluralistic media to thrive or survive. This can be done by 
a number of ways that include, though not limited to, one, anti-monopoly stroke trust regulations, which will help avoid excessive taxation on smaller medias to allow them to also survive. Number two, by making large spectrum of airwaves, frequencies, available for media to tap into. Number three, encourage a strong private sector in addition to state-controlled media. Number four, legislating minimum TV stroke radio access to all opposition political parties, particularly during election campaigns. Number five, freedom of information laws or avoiding laws that discourage the free flow of national security-related information released after a certain period of time. Number six, legislating appropriate privacy or libel laws that prevent the media intrusion into people's private lives or sensationalization of human suffering. However, these privacy laws must not block legitimate investigative journalism. Having a press council or a regulatory commission that upholds standards, clamping down on abuses or inflammatory languages calculated to provoke social divisions and unrest adjudicates complaints and allows individual organizations redress for unfair treatment through libel actions, for instance. Rather than the state closing newspapers, it is better for individuals' organizations to drive abusive media out of business through financial penalties. Now, as we draw closer to the end of chapter one, I'll take you through the relationship between politicians and the media. Basically, it is a love-hate relationship. Both need each other, the one to provide the information and the other to communicate it. The role of the media in a democracy is the result of uh, the permanent creative tension between the two sides. It is a messy system, but the alternatives, a media that is excessively docible or excessively critical of the fact that politi politics is only the art of the possible. Number two, government wants to control the release of information and present a unit front. While the media like to look at the cracks and the contradictions. One likes good or predictable news, i.e. dog, it's man. The other likes bad news or unusual news, which is man, it's the dog. Number three, politicians like to present their success and their opinions to use the media to gain recognition and enlarge their authority. The media's role is to question these critically, analyze and judge the role of the media in a never too blindly or unquestionable support a given political party or cause. That not only undermines the credibility and value of the media, which becomes simply a propaganda machine, it also undermines the political party or cause as no institution can thrive and adapt to change without regular constructive criticism. If the media is uh, to do its job seriously, politicians must treat the media seriously. Regular flow of information briefings and honest objective approach the media do not get information from you they will usually get it from someone else accurately so it is a counterproductive to ignore the media number next avoid uh, cover-ups if a mistake is exposed by the media acknowledge it and show that you are taking steps to redress it that is restoring the confidence. Next, 
Politicians and journalists should treat each other with respect but not friendship. Politicians who believe they control journalists are invariably disappointed. Journalists who get too close to politicians lose their objectivity. The relationship should be close, though not too close. Number next. In deciding on any policy, it is essential to devise a media strategy as an integral part of the process. The perception of the policy is important as the policy itself, particularly in an age when the media presents news in real time and political leaders announces their decision to each other via CNN rather than through diplomatic cables, it is inevitable in modern democracy that politicians should use spokespersons and PR consultants to keep their personalities and message prominent in the media, but there are no substitute for political leaders explaining themselves direct to their voters via the media. That is the essence of a democratic process. Well, thank you again. Uh, that has been chapter one of our media and cause communication policy will join me again in our next session in which we will be discussing chapter two. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. More educational material are coming your way. Do not dare miss even a single sharing. See you again in our next video.